Welcome back to Refit and Sale. My name's George, just did the Solent Boat Butler. This is a Contessa 32 that was built in the mid 70s. It's Project Lottie. If you've been waiting for this series to restart, here's an extra episode now. In this episode, we're going to be cutting some bits off the deck, gluing some new bits down, and that's all in an effort to make it possible for me to fit a new mast. <laughs> So we're back on Lottie as you can see and I haven't really talked about the mast and the rigging on this boat at all in this series and uh, I'll come on to that now. So the boat came with its original gold mast which is getting on for 50 years old and the plan was to reuse that mast and you know, replace all the rigging, standing rigging, running rigging, what have you. But I've had my rigger have a look at it because I saw some suspicious bits and bobs on it and uh, ultimately it is getting a bit past it. And whilst it could be repaired, um, there are various cracks, um, corrosion, all sorts of other bits and pieces that could be repaired. The cost of doing those repairs is going to get um, up to or possibly exceed about £3,000. And given that the mast is already getting on for 50 years old, is it sensible to spend that sort of money on a 50 year old mast so the customer has sensibly said okay then let's go and have a look at the cost of a new mast please so um, I've been away two three different mast manufacturers looking at what that is going to cost uh, we've got quotes from all three and ultimately we have decided to go with a new Selden mast now Selden is the mast manufacturer that is used most commonly on these boats and um, it's a good fit for the boat it's uh, a really good high quality mast so that's what we're doing I've got that now on order, but they're waiting on some measurements for me. The um, original plan for fitting the mast was that um, we would retain this collar on the deck and use a deck ring that fitted around the back of the mast, which meant that we didn't have to cut this off. But having checked the mast section, I've got a, a, a small sample piece of the mast section we're going to be using, it doesn't fit through the hole. So the plan B, which isn't a bad plan, um, is to cut this collar off. I am going to have to um, fit a moulding onto the deck. Uh, that gives me a flat area and then I can place on the deck the Selden deck ring to go with the Selden mast. So as I said on the boat I need a nice flat area for the deck ring to go on to. The coach roof is curved so I need some sort of interface between the two and I'm going to do that by making up my own deck ring support which I'm doing right now on the table here. So what I've got here is a sheet of acrylic, it's type of plastic and I have waxed that acrylic so that um, the material I put on there is going to release afterwards. So I'm using mold release wax which is this stuff here. So this gel coat has been put on yesterday. It has cured, but it's left a nice kind of tacky finish on there. And that tacky finish is uncured polyester, which will then cure when I put the next layers on there. So the next step for this, having put the gel on, is to lay up some glass fiber. I'm just going to be using chop strand mat, which is this stuff here. Um, I've got two weights. I'm going to put a I think it's a, a 450 gram and then I'm using 600 gram CSM on there. And then once that's all cured, I can cut out a nice shape, which is going to match the shape of the deck ring. Stick that down on the uh, boat, check it all looks good. And then I will bond it in place and then I will fix the edges. So obviously it's going to have gel coat on the top, but where I cut it, there won't be any gel. So I'll just come back in and effectively do a gel repair around the edge of that glass fiber sheet I'm putting on and um, it should look pretty tidy I think so uh, I'm going to crack on and do some laminating after a cup of tea.
the glass layer all done, both pieces. So I'm going to leave this for a few hours or possibly even come back tomorrow because I've got some boats being launched today. And uh, hopefully I'll be able to easily split this off the backing piece of acrylic that I'm using and then I can cut its shape and stick it on the boat and see how it looks. This piece here, I can't remember if I said it's for under the deck, so there's a white headlining in the boat which I'm going to have to partially cut into, and I wasn't sure if I was going to need a beautifying ring below deck, so that is what this is going to get used for potentially. As I was laying up that, I thought I may as well do that at the same time, and then I've got it if I need it, which I suspect I will. Um, anyway, it stinks in here, so I'm off to finish my cup of tea outside and then uh, head back to the boatyard. A couple of days have passed because I have been busy dealing with boat launches and testing out new engines and uh, getting them underway with their owners. And this has all cured nicely. So I'm going to remove it from the mold and the mold is actually just this sheet of plastic. Now, normally you would need something to kind of get underneath it if this wasn't a flexible surface. Um, I'd have to get some little wedges or sometimes you can even use like a razor blade or something like that just to get underneath it and tease it away from the surface it's been laid up on. But because I've laid it up on some thin plastic, hopefully I can just flex this and pop it off. So I will move the camera so you can see what I'm doing. Here we go. Hopefully if I just pull this towards me, I can, there you go, you can hear that releasing. Yeah, oh, it's actually broken my plastic, but never mind, that was cheap enough. And there we have my sheet of glass fibre. Right, that is one part of it. Put that there. And do the same again if I can persuade this off. Go. there's my underneath piece that's turned out pretty nice I have a cunning plan it involves a pen and getting lots of pen on here and then flipping this over very quickly before the pen completely dries and hopefully transferring the shape because I can't draw straw around it because there isn't enough space to get a pen in. I really want a dry wipe marker but ta-da that worked pretty well <laughs> there we go just got to cut that out and then I have a template to transfer onto there.
that's the hole cut out and it's a nice kind of snug fit it's um got a tiny bit of freedom of movement there so that's just what i wanted so the next job after i drink my cup of tea which is essential equipment is to decide how big a border i want around this and i've just pulled out these little things so these are little stainless steel loops that clip in under the back edge and under the front edge of the deck ring and uh i'm gonna do it blind there we go for you to attach ropes to or blocks to or whatever you need really so i was just wondering if they are going to affect how big a border i want around this but actually i don't think it matters one bit because any block that's attached to that will flop up or flop down if there's load on it or if there's no load on it so i don't think that really matters so to make this as small and as neat as possible what i'm thinking about doing is just having a kind of 15 mil um so just over half inch border just around here and then that can be fitted down and i'll gel around the edges and it'll look quite neat i think so i'm going to let you into a little tip that i have for drawing around something if you want an even line and that is to use a circular device that is about the right size this is a ptfe thread sealant but what i can do is i can stick a pen in the middle there roll that around the outside and i'll get a nice even line the whole way around apart from where it goes into these ridges of course but that's fine i can even that out when i do the final cutting so if i take that out and that out and that out get my mark pen and uh now i'll tell you how easy it is i'll probably mess it up but stick my pen in there and just carefully and a roll around the outside. All the way. Until I do a full 360. There we go. So that gives you a nice, neat line all the way around the item that you are trying to make so uh, i'm gonna even it up a bit with the cut in fact when i cut it out i'll probably cut beyond that line slightly and then i'll sand back to that line and that way i know i have a nice fair curve all the way around so time for that tea <laughs> And here we go, there's my flat area for the deck ring to sit on. This just now needs bonding down onto the deck and uh, I will show you that shortly. But what I will say is I was very silly and I wasn't always wearing the appropriate PPE. So if you are working with fiberglass, cutting it, what have you, I was wearing my safety glasses, but I probably should have been wearing a mask even though I had a vacuum there that was sucking up most of the dust. Wasn't wearing gloves, should have done that, and I'm now going to be itchy for the rest of the day because the dust has gone up my arms. Now this is going to be a nice snug fit in there. And hopefully you can see that. Um, nice equal, even border all the way around. When this gets bonded down, I'm going to make a nice little radius here so it's kind of smoothed in with the deck. And then I'll do a, uh, a gel repair kind of over the top of that um, smoothed in filler that I'll end up using and uh, I think it's going to look very neat indeed. Quick break in the video just to thank those of you that have donated to refit and sale using the link that's down in the description. I've been promising it for quite some time that I wanted to buy a new microphone, a better camera, some better lighting. Well I have finally bought a new microphone. You can probably see it here. It arrived just after finishing off the filming of this current episode but I just wanted to show you it. There it is just to prove I have bought a new DJI set of microphones and if this sounds good give me a thumbs up, maybe subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Thank you again for those that have donated. It really does make a difference to uh, how I can buy the equipment that is going to allow me to produce better quality videos for you to enjoy. Thanks again, we'll continue with the fun. I'm on the boat now with my piece of uh, laminate that I've made to go under the deck ring. Um, 
So the next job is to cut this collar off the deck. So I'm going to do that with my oscillating saw and, uh, and then I can put this back on. And what I'm going to try and do is position roughly where it needs to go, draw around it and then I can rough up this surface and then uh, hopefully glue it on. That's the surface all prepped, so I've just given the deck that this is going to get stuck down onto a little bit of a grind back just to give that a good key and to remove a little bit of the non-slip. Everything needs a wipe down with acetone. Now, um, it doesn't need to be a super, super strong bond because there shouldn't really be an awful lot of load on this deck ring because all the loads on it are going to be from the ropes which are attached to the turning blocks which go onto the deck ring but all the loads go back to the mast through the use of some tie rods which take all the loading from the deck back to the mast so there should be nothing really pulling this off if it's all set up correctly so i'm just going to be effectively bonding this down with some polyester um, bonding paste which has glass fibre um, strands in it so I'm just going to mix up a load of that stick it down all on there blob it all on um, put this down it's going to have to go at an angle because the deck slopes I'm lifting the front edge up I'm going to use this block of wood in fact it's just about the right size so I'm going to bond it down very roughly so that I know it's in the right place and then I'll come back and do a second bond filling in any gaps afterwards uh, and then, whilst that is all curing, I will go and get the gel coat, which I have left in the workshop, and I can come back and gel all the way around the edges just to finish it off neatly. That's the initial bond done. I need to come back tomorrow, do a little bit of sanding and a bit more filling around the edge just to beautify it a bit. I need to obviously open up the hole in the middle as well, but um, I'm going to let all that cure overnight and I'll come back tomorrow. <laughs>
the next day and it's pretty blimmin' windy again today so I haven't been able to do much recording because I can't get the camera to stand up uh, without getting blown over but you can see I have opened up the hole so that um, there's no issues with the mast going through the original bit of deck so that looks good ended up yesterday I think I put two or three coats of gel coat on there that got sanded back and then I put a further two coats of gel around the outside that needs wet sanding just to finish it off but it's looking pretty good and you can see in there possibly that I have just done a little bit of a sand and a little bit more of a fill just to fill in any little gaps and um, once that is cured it's going to get another little sand and then I'm just going to flow coat the inside of that with white gel and on the inside so that it all looks nice when you stand next to the mast in the cabin and look up you'll just see all nice clean white gel coat in there rather than kind of filler and other bits and pieces so that is the way I'm going to be finishing it off I'm going to crack on with that I'm afraid it's going to be off camera because it's so windy and there we go it's all nicely flow coated on the inside why do I flow coat it well at some point when the mast boot comes up someone will look in there and it'll look all neat and tidy and I think that's worth a small amount of effort. I've also re-flow coated over the ring on the inside, I'll show you that just now. So very fortunately when I opened up the hole, the hole still sits just inside this kind of beautification ring that has been on the boat from new. So I have also, so that it all ties in, masked up around that and flow coated it. I'm sorry the light isn't terribly good because the camera is trying to focus or expose on the light coming through the hole but there we go you get the idea unfortunately it's made the rest of the headlining look a bit grubby but that will clean up and I think once it's all clean and nice that will look very smart indeed so I'm going to wait for that to cure I might help it with a heat gun and then I can actually bolt on the deck ring and there is that deck ring bolted down and in place I'm afraid I haven't filmed as much as I would have liked because it is about to pour with rain. The forecast is for heavy rain this afternoon and I can see the clouds on the horizon so I'm rapidly packing up. I'm about to cover this in a big yellow bucket to uh, stop the wet getting into the boat but I'm pretty pleased with how that's turned out. I've got a little bit of wet sanding I want to do kind of around here but um, apart from that which I can do with it in place, um, she's all done. Um, below decks it looks like that. There's an orange hue coming through because I've got my bucket on the top there now um, but uh, that is looking pretty good pretty tidy I had to notch out the uh, kind of frame beautifying thing that goes around the inside there just to get the fixings on but I thought that was a better way of doing it than kind of building up a surface because the holes where they came through at the back there were half on and half off that beautifying ring so easier to just notch them out a little bit but um, there we go all good that brings this episode to an end. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching. I will be doing some more videoing on the mast uh, replacement at some point when it arrives, but I had to get that in so I can make some critical measurements for Selden so that they can agree on the design and start making the mast because once that's in the system, then it will be spat out the other side with a new mast that gets delivered in, I think, something like 8 to 12 weeks. I can't remember the number they gave me now, but um, we want to get that on order because we want to take the boat out for a sale. Thanks again for watching. I hope you've enjoyed. Do hit the like and the subscribe button if you want to see more of my content, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.